and I think too, um, just for her, um, if you're having problems with this with other people opening up and being vulnerable, it's also very hard for people to be vulnerable because a lot of people don't want to do that because they're afraid of getting hurt. Because when you yeah. open yourselves up and you get shut down when you decided to open yourselves up to this human being and that person gets fucking diced and sliced up, it's like, yo, fuck, I made a mistake. I should have just shut my fucking yeah. mouth. And that's what people are scared of because – being vulnerable, yeah, it does open up a relationship and help it to grow. But you, that person also has to be willing to take that risk because there is a risk. Yeah, whenever um, I look at a situation, I never, I never say you should be more vulnerable. Yeah, because I'm not creating an environment for them to open up. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, there are people that are very closed off, but people tend to confide in you or like they'll they'll open up. When they feel comfortable. Yeah. Most people um, don't because they don't feel comfortable. Yeah. So a lot of the times people don't set up the right uh, environment for for people to f be able to speak freely. Yeah. And if you're talking about this uh, in a relationship sense, yeah, I mean, being vulnerable with your partner is, is very, very important. Um, and if somebody finds that as a sign of weakness, you you would be very much mistaken because being vulnerable with your partner helps it to grow a lot. There's There are things that you should really open up and communicate with your partner, in my personal opinion, because who who else will be there for you? Yeah. Like, who else? If, if the person that you're going to spend the rest of your life with, that you're choose, if you're in a monogamous relationship, if that person can't be there for you in that type of sense, then who? Like, who? They're supposed to be your confidant. They're going to be your family. They're going to be a wife or a husband. And vulnerability is something that you should be selective of. But it should be something that you should be able to do with the partner that you're with because things can only get better from that point. Yeah, you might get hurt. You might feel like you made a mistake when that shit backfires in your face here and there. But if you do have a healthy relationship and you guys are communicating really well, then vulnerability is a fucking must. I don't think in most cases, too, people know that they're holding information back. Mm, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, like most people, they don't go throughout life like hiding shit. Like they're not doing it on purpose. No, it's like we all see it. Because people are stupid and we see what they're doing. But we have this funny thing called ego that protects us from seeing ourselves. So, like, you might see your boyfriend um, hurt over something. And then you're like, talk to me about it. And then he's all like, I ain't hurt. What the fuck? What are you talking about? Yeah. They don't uh, even know. They don't even know. They don't know that they something just bothered them. Mm -hmm. Maybe you got to word it different. Maybe it's like. He doesn't like to be called hurt, even though that is what's happening. But when you want someone to be vulnerable with you, you got to use their words and things that make them comfortable instead of saying, no, you need to say it like me mm -hmm. and admit that you're hurt and be open and vulnerable. Like that'll never open people up. Yeah, it's and I understand what it's like to not want to be open and vulnerable with somebody, because in a previous podcast, when I first started this podcast and I had Mariel on, I told her that's something that she didn't know, but. I had a huge issue of saying, of showing her that I missed her or kind of being more affectionate towards her because I just had this weird roadblock of fear of like, well, what if you fucking leave? So what's the mm. whole point of showing you this side to me anyways? You know, there, there's, there's fear to that type of shit, especially, and it depends on, you know, what stage of your relationship you are with this person. Cause it took me like three years for me to finally open up and really be vulnerable with her to be. And you have to even know that you had that fear. Yeah, it took a while for me to kind of register yeah, that shit. Because like, most people will just react mm -hmm. and then just be like, uh, like and make maybe crack a joke instead of saying I miss you or whatever, yeah. right? Until someone points it out. And yeah. then you're like, what? Oh. I was, I was, because Mary would be on some shit like if I, if I kind of uh, said like, hey, I really miss you and I appreciate you. This bitch, we'd be in a bunch of a group of our friends. And she's like, you know what David said yesterday? He said he really oh missed me. I'm God. like, you fucking bitch. Like, don't. That's between us. Why would you do that? Damn she it. She is so funny, dude. <laughs> she's, I was like, God damn it. I just opened up to you, you fucking bitch. But it's because she thinks it's really cute. You yeah. Know? And she, she finds it really uh, adorable. But and she like, wants to parade it around like a trophy. Yeah. Like, she feels great. Like, this is an awesome yeah. thing. And I, I understand it. I'm just like, God damn it, woman. Don't. 
She's going to be an awesome mom. Yeah. Embarrassing. <laughs> Embarrassing the fuck out of her kids. Huh. You know what little little Kang Kang said? I don't know the kid's name yet. <laughs> Kang Kang said that he loves his teddy bears. It's like, oh, God. You just embarrassed our son. First of all, <laughs> I already named him Kang Kang, so he's already an embarrassment. Kang Kang. <laughs> little Kang Kang. Little Kang Kang, dude. Yeah. I, I think everyone should learn to be a little more vulnerable, though. But in order to, to for that to happen... It takes a lot of courage and it. And what, what I mean by courage is being able to look inside. And this is some next level maturity shit where a lot of people can't even do it. And they're like 60 or 70. Oh, dude, man. You would think through some of these old people, man, you would think that the moment they try to even say something is cute or adorable. You would think that they would have a fucking heart attack. Yeah. Because uh, because it's not manly enough. Right. Like even saying, like for example, like my dad. <laughs> Has never said sorry. If that fool said sorry, I think he would have a heart attack on yeah, the spot. Yeah, same with my uncle, man. You know, it's like never sorry. Never say is, sorry. Never say sorry. Korea never say sorry, dude. Like they never will. Yeah. And it's because it makes you vulnerable. You have it to makes them fault. lose. Yeah. It makes them wrong. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think old Asian people just hate fucking losing and being wrong. Yeah. My, I, I think no mistakes. No mistakes whatsoever. I think my dad could literally. Like place a bed of knives upright on the floor, trip me and have me land in it, and he'll be like, "You should have just been born with a steel body." <laughs> you know, you should have looked where you were walking. Uh, you should have tripped, t- turned your body sideways, and missed all the knives. Like that's just how that man is. Like it's impossible. See, you should have continued Taekwondo. <laughs> I know. If you did Taekwondo, if, if you were never so pad, you'd be pasted past like a cat, and then you would jump on your feet like a this one, and then you'd be okay. <laughs> you know. My mom too. She said this funny thing. Did your mom? Uh, is your mom evolving more than your dad? It seems like. I think my dad has evolved past my mom. Really? My mom is the most stubborn human being. Oh ever, shit! She she she's so fucking stubborn. She says she goes all the things that you hate about me that I do. Don't even think about changing it because I will never change. Wow. Yeah. She goes, you be an adult and you live with it for the rest of your <laughs> life. So she well, just, she's on. She's very self aware. Yeah, she's very so she knows she's a fucking asshole. Yeah. She just was like, no, this is how mommy is. You either accept it or don't accept it. You're not gonna change me. I'm like. That's- oh, Oh, okay, well, I guess I just have to deal with that then. Because, <laughs> for example, like this woman cannot keep a secret to save her life. Yeah. Like she still can't do it. Yeah. And I keep falling for the trap. I'm the dumb one. Yeah, Because you she's are. like, you could you could tell me. I'm not going to tell anybody. I'm like, this is my mom. I could trust her. <laughs> Two seconds later, she goes, I told everybody. <laughs> I'm like, you fucking bitch. She's probably like, I'm not going to tell nobody. And she goes out of her way to start calling people up. <laughs> Instead of like, you know, when people slip at a secret, it's like because during a conversation, right? Yeah. Your mom probably intentionally calls people up and lets them know your secret. Dude, verbatim what she said in Korean, she goes, I feel that if I don't tell somebody, I'm going to internally explode. <laughs> this- what From what? From guilt? <laughs> From like, because she just can't hold a secret. She just has oh, to tell somebody, dude. I'm like, you are the worst person ever. If I ever commit a crime, she is not allowed to be there as a witness. I'm she will. Telling- I have to tell you, he, David killed that person. She, he killed him so bad. And all the crimes that you did in the past, all Dude, of it. My mom is such a unique person. Like, I think I'm very grateful to have her because at least I could talk to her very casually and very fun. Um, and I didn't realize how uh, uncommon my relationship <laughs> with my mom is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially in an Asian household where... Like, how close you guys are? Yeah, like, we talk about everything. You know what I mean? Like, uh, Meryl and I got into a little fight yesterday, yeah. and I talked to her this morning about it, just to vent. Yeah. And then I felt way better. Yeah. And my mom, too, whenever she fights with my dad, she, she calls vents. me up, and she bitches about this fool. This She called me up the other day, dude, uh, about my dad. She goes, God damn, your dad did it again. I'm like, what, am I, what did our dad do? She goes, you know how he just fucking acts like he's just the smartest motherfucking person on earth. Wow. And every time I do something wrong, he goes, oh, you don't even know how to do that? She's like, fuck you. <laughs> I, I, I don't need to know how to do shit. You know, she goes, well, there's a lot of shit that he doesn't know how to fucking do. He goes, how many times have I told him about the price of, of that product? And he's always asked, oh, how much is it? How much is it? What are you fucking dumb? Because <laughs> you're stupid, too. And then she's literally talking shit about him as he's sitting right next to her. <laughs> wow. And he doesn't give a fuck. And my dad just in the background is like, your mom's at it again. And I can hear him just mouthing off in the back. And she's talking shit about him to me on the phone as he's sitting next to her. Dude, they have some passionate fights still, huh? Dude, they're old. They still fight. Super passionate. I mean, not as bad as it used to be when yeah. I was younger, but they still get into it. They man. still fight. It's because they work together twenty four fucking seven. Still, they still run the business together. Damn. They see each other right when they wake up, all the way to the till they sleep. They don't have a break from each other.